Hello boys and girls and Kerbals of all ages. Today I will be going over the rules for Kerbal Showdown and the first series uh, cons uh, constraint set. So again, Kerbal Stro Showdown is a new dogfighting series created by yours truly, Klaus Analis. The focus of the series will be on more non-historic, you know, Historical and non-fighter aircraft. I mean, you know, tape gaming has done you know, where you know you build as much as you can. You know, there are missiles, your you know super maneuverability, all this stuff. I, I kind of want to take a step back. You know, do something a little more, a little more challenging, maybe a little more creative. So generally, you know, each series will have a theme. Themes will differentiate, and, you know, design and performance constraints depending on the theme. And again, there will be a couple different game modes. So again, the the first one that we'll be starting out with will just be you know standard duels, one on one. Whoever shoots the other down first wins. Teams, you know, we'll move on to eventually to team matches, which will consist of multiple aircraft. I'm thinking two or three per team. That's generally pretty good. And then teams with the most plan planes at the air and at the end of the clock will win. Or if they just shoot them all down, they, they win a shorter time. Attack and defend will be, you know, there will be an objective that one team will have to attack and the other team will have to defend against. This could be anything from an AWACS, a tanker plane, a radar station, or a, a ship. It could just be all right. Don't let, don't let aircraft get into this certain area type thing. Why not? So again, on to the construction rules. So again, no unnecessary part cramming. So that, I'll, I'm generally pretty lenient on this stuff, but it just means don't, don't like shove like crap tons of wings into your aircraft to make it super, you know, incredibly maneuverable. Or you know, don't be just cramming a ton of fuel in a very small area just to, just so you can get more range. Now again, there will be exceptions to this. I mean, for one with historical aircraft, you can do that just for you know to make sure the performance is right. But also, like I will allow for just kind of kind of more measured response. For example, if you were to be if you were wanted to, you built a plane where you know, generally fuel is in the wings, but you don't have the parts. So let's say you're going stock or just the you know the wing parts you're using don't allow that. What I would say is, all right, you can in theory shove a fuel tank up in the middle that would have cut you would have contained the fuel that would have been in the wings, and that's fair. Just make sure you know, it's generally it wouldn't adjust the center of mass too much from where it would be, would have been given given it was in the wings. Uh, designs can be original or based on historical aircraft. That's mostly me, but uh, they must meet all, again all the design constraints and be reasonable given the series uh, theme. So again, you know, in the case of in this uh, for this first series, we'll be doing uh, propeller powered uh, executive planes. So you know, whether it be like a you. Know, get things like a Pilatus, a King Air, that type of stuff. So again, so make it, it's like new supersonic, you know, general aviation. Y'all you know, want like a supersonic citation or a uh, super maneuverable C-130 type thing. So again, m make sure it's tasteful. I'm generally pretty open with this kind of stuff. I, you know, it's, it's meant to be creative, but don't be too creative in that sense. You know, don't want to be cheaty. So again, historical designs, because they're following you know, more historical precedents is they will get the right where you, you can kind of bend the rules to, um, ensure that your aircraft performs similar to a historical one. A great example of this would be, you know, uh, <clears throat> for example, if we were to do airliners of the 1940s, for just, you know, from scratch designs, they will have to be propeller powered. But for example, if you were to do historical, you in theory could build a de Havilland Comet, which was in fact jet powered. No, granted, it wouldn't have had much power on. You could, you know, the engines, you wouldn't be able to scale them up too much. They'd have to be exactly as it was generally, but you still can do that. Also, you can adjust certain things. For example, I would use the case of, you know, wing shoving to make sure that it has, you know, the proper wing loading, also center of lift. Because I will say, a lot of historical designs, you know, Kerbal does not model lifting body on most parts as well as it should. So sometimes you need to kind of put some wings in the body just to, just to match things out. Also, weight. I have noticed some capsules are pretty heavy. I've actually personally myself dropped the weight on some parts. So, again, I'll, I'll come out if anyone's asked questions. But again, but also, again, the con for historical aircraft is they have to maintain uh, the distinctive features, also relative performance. So, you know, again, if it has certain, you know, a distinctive things for doing 747, you know, it has to have the hump. If that's a, you know, a Concorde, it has to have the droop nose. Cirrus planes, you know, got to have the rescue chutes. Which I think is relatively fair. Actually, in one case, too, for other things, the rescue shoots may actually help you. <laughs> uh, for example, a mid-air collision. That could be interesting. We'll get to that later, though. Armor ratings, in this case, no armoring your aircraft or changing the armor rating on parts. Eventually, we might do it, go into that once I figure out kind of how to, how to play certain things. But for right now, don't touch those numbers. Just leave that at the standard 10. 
try to keep park counts as low as possible. You know, we all love pretty planes, but don't be that guy that has a 3,000 part aircraft because he built he built it entirely from scratch using little winglets and structural parts. That would make my computer cry. We all want to have a good time. We all want to be lagging. So again, also finally, control must be must be maintained by normal means. So. No thrust vectoring on planes that would normally have thrust vectoring. Control surfaces, you know, have to be dedicated. You can't have your, you can't use control surfaces that just have apps that do absolutely everything. You have to have, to, you know, dedicated things. No, granted, you like in cases where aircraft may have them combined. For example, if you were to do a V-tail, you could have combined rudder and elevators. That's fair. It's more just don't make sure that you know parts aren't having doing too much and again to excessive maneuverability same goes with the type of control services you know for building like you know Cessnas and whatnot don't have all moving wing parts that that's just that's not how it works also like RCS systems will be prohibited and no shoving tons of SAS pods in there because again you want your maneuverability to be from your design not from cramming cramming parts again that also kind of goes in the part cramming rules so as for match rules, unless otherwise specified, aircraft will have to start on, so we'll start on some sort of runway, either it be, you know, the runway slash taxiway at the KSC or the U of the field to the left. Eventually you may get into matches where we will host them in more uneven ter terrain and I will set them up. I might even use Kerbal Constructs to set up little runways. And uh, if we do something like that, you will be, you know, you'll be made aware Probably will be in the case of like, we'll be building bush planes and sorry, it has to be able to take off from, you know, the grasslands or has to be able to take off from the top of the mountain or something like that. I'll make it very well aware and I will do videos on like kind of stuff like this. Like after this, I will do a, you know, demo video for the series. So again, yeah, aircraft should carry all necessary fuel and they must take off and, you know, the configuration specified, we'll get into that later. So again, make sure you have all the fuel and ammo for your match. For the first few, I will just be doing infinite ammo just because it's it's easier. We don't have to worry about it as much. But later on, you'll have to do that. Infinite fuel, I will generally not grant with the exception of rocket aircraft because they won't be able to fly for very long. And that will have like constraints. Right, you have to build a plane that, when fully loaded, you know, can fly for at least you know a few minutes just to just to make it somewhat fair. But again, so if a plane's destroyed, you know, the pilots are shot out. If it lands, it will be it's considered out of the game. It's dead. You know. Nothing else to be said there. In the event of a mid-air collision, it's all about kind of survivor of the survival of the fittest. As I said, like in this case, if you if you build to like a CRS or you know your plane features rescue parachutes, good for you. I will do my best to deploy them. But uh, again, so it's whoever survives the most, and if either both die, will be considered a tie. That's pretty fair. Matches will you know simple matches will consist of uh, one round for you know, the first ones. Uh, we'll move on to two with a tiebreaker for the championship ones. So that'll be like final 16 and beyond. And in the case of the first one, like if the first for the initial matches, if the first one's a tie, there will be a secondary. And if that is also a tie, then they will be, you know, the match will be considered a draw. And both competitors will either go on to the next round or will be uh, both eliminated, depending on how things work out. Um, as for theming... Like, oh, and, oh, before I mentioned, yes. Drone wing are strictly prohibited. Don't be that guy. I don't want to go through that a third time. That was not pleasant. Just don't do that. Eventually, I may allow, especially when, we, when I start getting to more fighter-based series, we may allow custom missiles and or other types of weaponry, but no drones. Drones are strictly prohibited. Strictly, yes. So on to theming. So again, you know, each, each series will has, have a certain theme correlated with the aircraft. For example, this first one will be, you know, executive prop planes. So yeah, and then each you know, each theme will have certain design and performance constraints. So design says, you know, government, how it can be built, the parts you can use, you know, requirements for that, you know, and also just kind of restrictions on construction techniques. Performance will say, all right, you know, how will the aircraft perform? You know, does it have to be able to go a certain speed? Does it have to be able to land on water? Does it have to be able to perform in certain ways? Again, that. Here is the mod load. If it's required, it's pretty much almost certainly required. Like, really, in theory, I said the only one you need is BD Armory, but tweak scale is you almost certainly need that just for the types of stuff we'll do in Airplanes Plus. For example, like, you know, how else are you going to get propellers because the stock ones don't work? If it's strongly recommended, I would definitely get, for example, Air Interstellar Fuel Switch. 
inter interstellar fuel switch. That will allow you to change the type of fuel in certain tanks, which will allow you to kind of carry more fuel and you know manage your configuration better. Again, this type of stuff. It's optional. That's just kind of stuff that I, I threw in there like that in theory we can might get around to. You don't really need it. For example, physics range and center and vessel mover. That could be useful for testing certain things, but you, you won't need it, you know, if you're just building a plane and submitting. Uh, so again, that is all for the rules. If you have any any questions, comments, concerns, you know, uh, comment below. If you are watching this video again or just all you care about the rule is, you know, remember to please like and subscribe. For those that are on to learn about that first design constraint, here we go. All right, so again, series one was general aviation executive props. So first installment, the uh, the brass at the Kerbal Aeronautics and Space Administration, Vermont Kerman, have asked for a new prop plane to take them around to the <coughs> to the island runway. So again, the design constraints will, will be as follows: only you know only propeller engines can be used. They don't want to deal with any nasty jets, now would we? It, uh, it can be armed with up to one Vulcan cannon. No more, no less, no machine guns. Well, you, in theory, you can use machine guns, but the crap. No. Just use a Vulcan. Makes it easier. And it must carry at least two millimeter ammo boxes. Again, there will be infinite ammo, so I would just say put in the two and call it a day. Ammo boxes generally can... They should be roughly placed where the gun is, but it's okay if you use them to kind of ballast your aircraft a little bit. I know I do that some of my planes just because you know it's like a little bit of weight and you can adjust it a little bit it's, it's kind of nice uh must have accommodations for at least two crew plus any passengers and cargo so now, there, now there'll be two different design classes there will be small craft which will have a maximum th engine thrust of get 90 kilonewtons and must carry four passengers for larger aircraft they can have combined thrust of 140 kilonewtons and they must either accommodate eight passengers or four and carry 0.8 tons of cargo. I got that number just by saying if we've replaced the crew tank, you know, the little two-person crew tanks with a uh, structural fuselage and just put in a, you know, a, a fuel tank to ballast it, in my case I used the ore tanks, we would make it roughly the same. So again, that. As for performance constraints, you know, it can't exceed 180 meters per second, but must be able to travel fa faster than 100 meters per second. The 180 is more just in the event someone gets some wacky engine configuration, they're able to go super, super fast. Again, I don't, I want to have supersonic prop planes in my, I think that won't be very fun. Also, again, it's just, you want to have planes traveling at roughly the same speed because when you have one plane traveling a lot faster than the other, I've, it's kind of funny, I've put like my F-15 against little like World War II era prop plane, you know, propeller driven aircraft and the F-15 goes like four times as fast and it cannot get a kill because it, by the time it gets in range, it's already past the target because it's traveling so fast. The other ones are traveling so slow. Uh, must be able to fly to the island runway, land on set at, land on the runway, take off the runway and return to land at the KSC. And then as for uh, BD Armory settings, the minimum altitude will be set to 750. This is just to prevent crashes. I did some testing. If your plane cannot handle that, still likes a crash, please set it higher. Again, if your plane crashes just in the normal course of things, it's it's out. I'm not going to... I will occasionally, you know, kind of interfere to intervene to provide some, you know, some rescue. Especially, like, if... I've noticed, especially some of the lower-performance aircraft, it'll go into a dive and just doesn't realize which way it wants to go to pull up, so it'll keep flipping back and forth and just, you know, lawn dart. But in most cases, if it crashes on its own, that's, it's out. That's it. So again, that will be all for the first design series rule, rule set. And if you have any other additional co questions, comments, if, you, if there are any rules that you think I'm missing, any things that you'd want to add, again, let me know. Put in the comments below. And again, remember... Like and subscribe, and always keep the pointy side forward.